All right, my friends, here we are at the middle of the week. And first and foremost, if you know me, if you've been keeping up with me, even for a minute, you know I spent 10 whole days. God, please let it be finished. 10 whole days, uh, what a man would say, giving birth, I think, to two kidney stones for sure. I don't know how that whole process culminates in a fi uh, finale, whatever. I just can tell you that as of Monday morning, I woke up Monday and pain wasn't the first thing on my mind. And I haven't felt any since then. So praise God. Still, I question why did why did you make it possible for us to have those things? And why didn't you make the little tubes they get stuck in flexible? I don't know. Uh, but God is good and, and, and I have survived. So thanks to everyone who prayed for me, who helped uh, in, in all of the various ways that I have to be helped. You are a godsend to me and I'm grateful for you. And I am glad that we can be together, whether you're here right now on Monday evening, the very first day of November, uh, an, a, a, an exciting, uh, I said Monday evening, Wednesday evening, uh, that's what today is, Wednesday, but today is uh, the first of the month, which means it's mealtime as a church, and it means we get to recognize some young people who have done a fantastic job in, in, in memorizing scripture and working on that, and so I, I hope you're here to join me in that, but if not, or if you come across this video some other time, I pray that God is blessing you, I pray he uses this to encourage you in the life he's called you to lead and the things he's called you to do. But uh, a lot going on. Here we are. This is, you're in the meat of the holiday season. Halloween was yesterday for a lot of people who go around and, and, and uh, trick or treat or, or had other celebrations to attend during that. And for some people, today is Merry Christmas. You know, it's just Halloween and then poof, uh, Merry Christmas. Christmas decorations have been in our local Walmart since mid-October. So we kind of expedite that uh, seemingly, seems to me, a little bit quicker than we used to when I was a kid. But, you know, Thanksgiving is nestled in there. And, and, and for many, uh, including myself, it's a very close second to the celebration of, of Christmas in the family connection and the memory-making orientation sort of way. Christmas, obviously, a, a much more significant holiday of, of recognition, but just the chance to be thankful, to focus on thanks, to ponder all that we have to be thankful for. Like I mentioned on Sunday, when your health is bad is one of the only times you are reminded, oh, I should be thankful for good health. And so when you're feeling immense pain, it's a reminder, as I have been for these past few days where I haven't been in that pain, to be thankful that I'm not in that pain. And I, I hope I can stay focused on that without having to go through this uh, again, ever, ever in my life. Uh, but if that happens, I hope I'll remember these, these uh, words I just spoke. But wherever you've come across this, thank you for being here and spending a little time with me. I am Mason, Brother Mason, and as always, you are exactly who you are. A thought that I would like to share to you uh, or with you today, I recognize I have occasions in my life where I will have to r say I'm not political, and I'm not here to tell people how to vote or what to think. I'm not, in fact, my personal favorite area of study in academics is why we think what we think and how you change any of that, but not in the format of manipulation, but just processes that exist in the world that you can see designed to change your mind or to change your opinion on, on various things. And today, the, the opinion or the thought that I would like to give you is to realize that though it seems uh, applicable at any time of human history, something that Paul warns to Timothy being applicable very much so, uh, though it is very much applicable to multiple points in history, it is very much applicable to today, and it recognizes the need we have to confess that we not only live in this time, but we are the harbingers of this time. We brought this about. I know it's very popular, it's very common, and it's very comforting to blame other groups or blame other people, but we are they. We are the somebodies. We are the ones who stood at the wall and allowed the things that are happening to happen. And I'd just like to give you one example of that today because it just, again, not politically, I, I, I don't, I don't, need, here, let me show you a picture. This is the current Speaker of the House. Uh, by political affiliation, he is a Republican. His name is Mike Johnson. And if I am understanding all of the things I've read correctly, Mr. Johnson serves as a representative to the state of Louisiana. I don't know Mr. Johnson. I have never heard his name. Well, whether I've heard Mike Johnson before, in reference to him, I have never heard of him to my knowledge. I know very little about him. But he serves as the current 
Speaker of the House, in the United States of America. The United States of America taught to me as a young man as the melting pot of the world, where everyone could come from all corners of the earth. They could be what was known as the melt, a part of the melting pot, where we were just assimilating all the beauty of all cultures into one, the American culture, and that gave birth to all sorts of ideas and things, some beautiful, some not beautiful, some colored to be beautiful, but not so much. I mean, if you don't have to be uh, a history expert, but you may remember learning of something in American history around the turn of the 20th century known as the Gilded Age, and it's called that on, on, on purpose because things that are gilded, like I don't know if it will come across necessarily, oh, sort of, yeah, you can see these are gilded pages on this Bible, and I have this Bible here in front of me with the same, not the same type, but gilded as well. Gilded meaning it has a covering, a semblance of gold, but it's not. And so the Gilded Age of America is when everything seemed to shimmer and shine, except it wasn't exactly as wonderful as it, as it appeared on the surface. So not everything is beautiful about America, but, but the overall idea was truth, justice, the American way. You can start at the bottom and work your way to the top. Everybody's always looking out for the betterment of everyone, and so on, and so on, and so on. To the point that we celebrate something called inclusivity. Now again, this is where I'm going. I'm going to this gentleman and something that he publicly said and how that was treated in the media. But inclusivity includes a recognition that though the country was founded on Christian principles and we could discuss deism, deists, and how did Benjamin Franklin really think, oh, blah, blah, we could do all that. That's fair. But you cannot deny that the country was founded on Christian principles, if not the Christian faith. It's not a theocracy. The government was never submitted to the authority of God alone. It was just in recognition of him and the inalienable rights that he bestowed upon all people. And part of that was inclusivity. It became inclusivity that we'll come, you come and you can have your ideals and be a part of our society, part of our group. And so that led to the inclusivity of celebration. Like, sure, it was common and still is, that you take an oath on a Bible. You might put your left hand on a Bible, raise your right hand. I solemnly swear, swear to tell the truth the whole, or the other way around. I don't know. Uh, you know, don't do that anymore. Or when you take the oath of office, you know, the president's going to put his hand on a, on a book. A senator, a house of representatives, they will put their hands on a, on a text normally. This often is the Bible. But there are occasions where someone uses the Quran, and that's celebrated, inclusive. I'm not saying you shouldn't. I'm saying that's how it's done. It's celebrated. I know one person put their hand on, on Carl Sagan's uh, book, I think the title Pale Blue Dot, or it's kind of his philosophy, science philosophy on creation and mankind, and they took their oath of office on that, and it was celebrated as inclusive. See, you can believe how you believe and represent America, and that's fine. It's just funny when it comes to this gentleman. This gentleman, Mike Johnson, he publicly recognized that he had what's known as a biblical worldview, that he believed in the Bible and in Jesus Christ as the Savior of mankind. And no sooner had that knowledge been shared out of his mouth publicly than news articles and, and reports all over Western media started coming out. Let me just give you a handful of the titles. All I did was look up the articles. I read them, but I looked up the articles and typed out the title, where they came from in the titles. And I just want to read those, just, just read those to you. So from the New York Times, as soon as, as soon as his faith was not only publicized, but he professed it and then wouldn't shrink back from it or apologize for it. A picture of Mr. Johnson next to the article in the New York Times, the embodiment of white Christian nationalism in a tailored suit and white Christian nationalism, meaning racist, fascist, and you're looking to force everyone to believe in Jesus and create the country under a theocracy. The Washington Post article, Mike Johnson is a pro-gun Christian nationalist. Yes, be afraid. In the AP, House Speaker Mike Johnson was once the dean of a Christian law school. It never opened its doors. Now, that's factual. But it's a law school that they tried to get started, a small Baptist law school and Baptist fuss. And so I researched a little, and they couldn't come to an agreement as the board of the school and, and money and this and that, and it just kind of collapsed. In an online uh, journal, uh, 
uh, online news thing, Mother Jones, an article, Mike Johnson conducted seminars promoting the U.S. as a Christian nation. Hundreds and hundreds of people have, have done that before, but okay. And then MSNBC, Mike Johnson's Christian nationalist track record isn't a mystery, it's a tragedy. Now, why am I bringing any of this up? Because at the same time that these organizations and others are running articles like that, hammering Christianity and a person who holds the philosophy, the dogma, the belief system of Christianity. At the same time, those news organizations are running articles reporting of the atrocity of Israel as compared to the just responding to a bad situation guilt of Hamas. Reporting casualty reports from a terrorist organization that keeps its military headquarters underneath a hospital, but overinflating what's taking place as a whole country defends itself from terror. We have U.S. Congress people who are calling on ceasefires so that this terrorist organization might be able to rebuild itself, though they won't say that part out loud. We have U.S. elected officials who support the removal of Israel from her own country and the encouragement. You know, we are told by these news organizations that Israel is participating in a genocide, but they ignore 20% of Israel's population is Arab Muslim. They don't shoot at one another. They don't blow one another up. They're not launching rockets at one another. Hamas is a terrorist organization, but we can't say that out loud, and public figures who do are immediately slammed. We have Jewish students locking themselves in, in libraries on college campuses because of protests and the threats of violence. We have a student being pulled aside, expelled, I guess. I didn't really see the result of what's going on. Threatening violence. We have people leaving rats in public places, burning Jews. We have this terrorist organization making videos of themselves doing these atrocities. One of them, forgive me, one, two, three, if you don't want to hear it, one, two, three, time out, if you're still here. They put an infant in an oven and turned the oven on. And they killed that child by baking it. We're excusing this? One journalist that's quoted in other mainstream locations later, do you call it tweeting now? I don't know what you call it anymore. Tweeted, they wondered if that baby was baked with or without baking soda. Or baby powder, or baking powder, one or the. What? Nobody's castigating that. Nobody's shaming that. Nobody's dealing with that. But we gotta deal with this guy because he believes in Jesus. You find that interesting? You find it at all strange? I find it a a, a brief reminder of something, Paul. I am so sorry. I have desperately wanted to change the location and the orientation of this microphone, but that means learning that this cable is sticking out right here. And as I move my hand back and forth from the keyboard, I am doing that. And I know you can hear that. I apologize for it. Uh, I, I, I will endeavor to do better. Maybe I want it to sound right so that you can hear if you're watching, but last week's wasn't. This comes from a website, Hope for Life, but I liked their image. Uh, this is a quote from 2 Timothy chapter 4, and this specifically starts in verse 3. This is 3 and 4. So you see there behind me on, on the wall, the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Or in other words, people don't want to hear the truth, but according to their own desires. They won't endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears or they are just hungry to hear what they want, they will heap up for themselves teachers, people who tell them what they want to hear. In other words, they will create echo chambers is the modern terminology for that. They will create a bubble in which what they want to hear is all that ever comes to them. They will turn their ears away from the truth and they will turn aside to fables, lies, made up things. That's describing right now. Certainly I won't deny it's describing time periods all throughout human history, but it's definitely describing right now. And what I want you to hear is what God has challenged me to realize for a long period. That's true because we let it be true. That's true because we allowed it. Again, we always bump into the, well, what am I supposed to do? And what am I, uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not capable of, nor am I in a position to try to answer that, especially not right now in the time I have. But nothing changes when we look at that and think, yeah, that's them. They are that way. They do that. Well, we, if nothing else, 
created the circumstances for they to be successful. Like, for example, explain to me why you get a speeding ticket and are expect to pay it, but your country doesn't defend her border in the same stand. Again, all of these hot button, difficult, complex things. Well, what if I stripped the complex out of it and just said, you've made a law, now it must be enforced. Or to be inclusive means to include that which you might not like. For example, all of these articles seem hardcore to not like Mr. Johnson based on his faith. But this is a country who are not allowed to discriminate from, uh, by faith. And in fact, we celebrate the inclusivity of other faiths. Faiths that maybe don't think the same way, see the same way. You see, the lie is that Western thought permeates the world, and that's not true. It is simple and yet hard to understand that certain people will just not think the way you do because of where they're from, their worldview, their education, their, their, their cultural philosophies. But we want to, we keep being told things that aren't correct, and uh, enough people want that sort of tickling. And so it keeps happening. Well, then where are those who will rise up and say, no, no more, not any further? As I mentioned Sunday, who will let Jesus turn the tables over in our own hearts about being distracted by things that don't matter, spending more time on our telephone than with our children. Stop entrusting other people to educate my child in the way they should see the world and take that responsibility on myself as it was given to me by my Creator. Well, not expecting someone to explain this to me without ever having encountered it, but reading it myself. Well, I don't know where to start. I don't know what some of this stuff means. That is literally part of why the church exists, to help us all through that. But it doesn't, it doesn't alleviate the call that we have to know these things. I have many times gone back and reminded myself by reading Exodus chapter 6 and, and the surrounding passages where, where uh, we're told biblically. I'm trying to flip to it now without stuttering. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Well, I can't remember now. I'm still, I guess I'm still foggy. That's embarrassing. <laughs> but uh, the Shema, Exodus chapter, is it not six? I if I knew better, I would pause and look that up. Chapter 6, verse 4, 5. Chapter 5, verse... I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> God, that's embarrassing. A smarter man would cut this out. I'm not gonna. That's just how I am. I can't remember the Shema of Israel. Chapter 4? Chapter... I'm, it's driving me nuts. I can't not know, but I gotta keep going. I'm, you don't need to be here any longer than yet. Where God instructs the people, specifically men, by the way, not only to know these things, but to teach them to our children, to talk about them as we rise up, as we go along our day, and when we lay back down. We're supposed to be about the things of God, not hearing things we want. Now, oh, this, this individual politician or this individual pastor or this individual leader, they're going to change. They're going to lead the way. No, they're not. We are. We are. Stop, stop thinking that other people will do it and stop buying what they keep trying to sell. They keep trying to lie, and we keep thinking that there's nothing to do in response. Actually, there is. There's, it's called being bold to be bold in our faith, to be known by what we believe, to be marked, whether outwardly, inwardly, or both. You want to tattoo your forehead with a, with a Christian symbol because that's how you want to be known? I mean, I don't, I'm not saying that's what you ought to do, but we need to be that obvious with it because on the flip side, all we're left with is a bunch of lying. Back and forth, back and forth they go, and... You know what all you and I know is that groceries keep getting more expensive, gas keeps getting more expensive, we're announcing new nuclear weapons, and we look like we're on the verge of a war while we're financing another war. But I'm not trying to say any one way or the other about any of that, except to recognize that in the midst of all of that, the biggest frustration in the news recently was the fact that, heaven forbid it, but someone who was openly professing to be Christian was the Speaker of the House. And I find that interesting in the country of inclusivity, the melting pot. You'd never hear that said about other, about other faiths in the same position. You might in the local restaurant or you might in the, you know, backyard, but not, not through media. Why, why have we been okay with becoming the enemy? We created it. We allowed for it. What if we started to take it back? 
Father, I want to be a part of a people who will take all, everything back that you offer us, everything that you give us, everything that you provide us. We live in a country unlike any other that has ever existed, but those who are not mindful of what they have will soon find themselves without it. And so I fear not that our country will collapse or fall apart. Perhaps it will. Perhaps it is destined to. Perhaps that is all within your plan. But what I fear most of all is that we will let that happen silently, that we will simply not pay attention or ignore that things are simply not the way they ought to be and we should demand from ourselves and from our communities a type of righteousness that is becoming all too foreign in the world. We pray for those who are struggling and suffering in the world today. I pray for those innocents caught up in all of this mess that your hand would be upon them and that you would still hearts and you would bring about a peace that perhaps no one currently believes is possible. But that in doing so, Father, great and mighty things would happen as our attentions were turned towards you. You are good and you are faithful and we have a great need. We pray you fill that need with your fullness, with your presence, and that we would be bold, living our faith, no longer feeling like the way we do best is by being silent. Raise us up, Father, to do what you command and what you desire, I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm still driving myself. The Shema of uh, Hero Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord. What is that? It's ex <laughs> okay, well, I'll know next week. I'll know in two minutes, but not right now because I appreciate you being here. And here it is, 21 minutes and 45 seconds. That's a long time for you to sit with me. A lot of people say that's a sermon. And so... Here it was in the middle of the week. I pray God blesses you. I pray he keeps you at the center of his will. And I pray that as this video comes to a close, you are reminded and encouraged to go out into the world around you and pour out kindness upon it, upon every person you come across, all because of the kindness Jesus has poured out on you. I love you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.